Hello everyone and welcome to week two of Celebrating Back to School with the Karen Beasley Sea Turtle Rescue and Rehabilitation Center. My name is Mary and I am the Summer Education Associate. Each week this month we'll be covering a new topic followed by a live stream on our Facebook page. This week we'll be covering a species we see quite often on Topsail Island, the loggerhead. Don't forget to tune in each week to see what we're up to. To start off this video, first let me introduce you to the loggerhead species. Loggerheads are native to our beaches here on Topsail, and if you ever see a sea turtle nesting on our island, it'll most likely be a loggerhead. Loggerheads are our third biggest species, weighing typically between 250 to 350 pounds. Their lifespan is unknown, but it's predicted to be anywhere from 70 to 80 years old. You can find loggerheads globally in temperate and tropical regions in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. And lastly, their diet consists of hard-bodied organisms like whelk and conch, they have very powerful jaws with a lot of muscle that they use to chew down on their favorite foods. Loggerheads face a lot of threats in their natural environment, but here are some of the main ones. They are currently dealing with the loss of habitat. Loggerheads nest here on the East Coast, so it's important that we're mindful of them and their presence on our beaches. You can see to the left is a loggerhead that was nesting here on Topsail Island. They also have to deal with a lot of changing environmental conditions as well as boat strikes. So boat strike is something that we see here a lot, um, especially during the warmer months. So picture to the right is duckweed who came in with a boat strike injury. And sadly, this turtle did pass away pretty quickly after arriving here at our hospital. Ocean pollution is something that they also have to deal with. And lastly, they often end up becoming bycatch and fishing gear. Here you can see Huckleberry who came to us with a fish hook in their beak. Here are some stats on loggerheads who have been admitted to the Karen Beasley Sea Turtle Rescue and Rehabilitation Center in 2025. This year, we have had seven loggerheads who have been brought to our hospital. To the right, you will see a chart showing the reasons a loggerhead has been admitted to our hospital in this year. If you've seen our video from last week focusing on Kemp's Ridley's, you will see loggerheads have more of a variety of reasons for admission. First, we have cold stunning and hooks both at 14.3%. Next is boat strikes at 28.6%. And the biggest reason for admission so far this year is DTS or debilitated turtle syndrome at 42.9%. DTS will be the topic of this video. So we're gonna discuss that a little bit more moving on. But here pictured, you can see Yao Pan who was our only cold stun loggerhead that came to us in 2025. Debilitated turtle syndrome or DTS is a non-specific term representing turtles that are anemic, malnourished, and often with heavy epibiota load. Epibiota are living organisms that find homes on sea turtles' carapace. This can include algae and barnacles. These turtles are often lethargic, which makes them easy targets for organisms to find a home on their carapace. We might not know exactly why these turtles are sick, but there are certain symptoms that are all similar between DTS cases. Here in North Carolina, we believe many cases may be related to past cold stunning events. We think sometimes cold stunned sea turtles don't wash ashore in the winter. They end up staying out in the ocean and later on they become DTS patients that we see. You can see here pictured is Bramble, who was admitted to us on August 5th, 2025, and they're going through the admit process. Meet one of our patients that came to us in 2025. This is Lichen. Lichen is a DTS patient who stranded here on Topsail Island. Stranded just means uh, when an animal has washed up ashore or become stuck and cannot get themselves back to its natural environment. That's the big thing is these turtles wash ashore or are found floating and they're just not able to get themselves back to the ocean to live a healthy life. Lichen here stranded on April 30th of this year. When this turtle was found, they were kind of going back out with the tide, but we were able to come in and rescue Lichen. Lichen was lethargic when found, but they were still responsive. And you can see here in the middle, that is our team carrying Lichen back to our hospital. Since every DTS patient is a little bit different, here are some common signs that we look for here in our hospital. Like I said, this could be different for every patient we see, but we're gonna follow some of the signs we saw with Lichen when they first arrived. So first off, Lichen had very heavy epibiota coverage when they first came in. You can kind of see it in this picture here. So they had algae, barnacles, small crabs, and even marine leeches on them when they first arrived. They were also very underweight, which is something else we look for. So lichen here only weighed 183 pounds on arrival. And you can kind of see by just by looking at their neck, 
this is not what a normal turtle should look like. So we knew um, something must have been going on for them to be that underweight. We also do blood samples. So our blood sample is called a PCV. So this stands for packed cell volume. And basically what this test does is it just shows the percentage of red blood cells within their blood. So usually for normal turtles, it should be in the mid 20s, but when lichen came in, it was at 7%, which is very low for our turtles. And then lastly, we also look for buoyancy issues. Um, usually when they come in underweight, sometimes they can um, have some of these buoyancy issues or something may have happened when they were out in the ocean. So if they're struggling to dive down to the bottom of the tank or arrival, or if they're just floating a lot of the time, this is another sign of DTS. Next, we're gonna take you through the treatments we give our DTS patients when they first arrive here at our hospital. We're going to be using lichen again as an example to show you the steps that we took to try to get lichen to a more healthy state. So first, what we did when lichen came in was we tried to remove all of the marine leeches off of lichen. So you can't see it too well in this picture, but lichen was absolutely covered in these marine leeches. They were all over their flippers, their neck, anywhere a marine leech could get, they were most likely somewhere on lichen. So these marine leeches, they're just parasitic worms that feed off the blood of other organisms. So if you can imagine if lichen already had pretty low blood samples, these marine leeches definitely weren't helping. And we were worried that if these leeches stayed on for too long, they could further decrease these blood samples which is never a good thing. Lichens was already pretty low, so we definitely did not want that happening. So to help with this, lichen was given freshwater soaks to try to kill off as many of these marine leeches as they could. And these soaks did a really good job. Um, you know, that fresh water really did a good job at killing off those marine leeches. Um, our staff did try to pick off some of them as well. So after those marine leeches were taken off, um, this was a good start to lichens recovery um, and we could really go in and do a lot more once we knew those leeches were gone. Our next step with these DTS patients is to remove all barnacles. So DTS often leaves our turtles very vulnerable to increase barnacle coverage. It's often because they're very slow and these barnacles just have an easier time attaching themselves to their carapace. So having barnacles is normal for sea turtles, but you know when they're slow and they're able to just have these barnacles latch on so easily, they do oftentimes get a lot more on them than our normal turtles. So um, we do try to get these off um, if there are too many on them. We don't want these barnacles weighing them down or getting in the way. So you can see here, this is lichen on May 5th after all those barnacles have been removed. It looks like you're looking almost at a whole different turtle, but um, getting those barnacle removed is a really um, important step in this process as well. So our third step in this process is to give fluids to these turtles. So because of how debilitated they are when these fir turtles first come in, they're often very dehydrated. So giving fluids to these turtles helps rehydrate them and really does aid in that recovery process. So for lichen's case, because lichen is a little bit too big to just take out of the tank and give their fluids that way, we do have to make sure that the water is lowered whenever we do give these fluids. So you can see there in that picture, that is one of our summer interns um, administering fluids to our turtle. So you can see they're in the tank with lichen, we do put padding down and towels just to prevent any injuries and make sure lichen is as comfortable um, as they can be in this process. Our fourth step in this process is so essential in making sure that these turtles get back to being healthy. So our fourth step is for this turtle to gain weight. So as I mentioned, they do come in underweight a lot of the time, and this is often because they're too slow or just don't have enough energy to be able to find food for themselves. So you can see here on the right, here is lichen's um, progression of weight throughout the time that they have been here. So we usually weigh our turtles once a week, but for lichen, that's just not possible because of how big they are. But they have been weighed a lot throughout this process. And this is just a way that we can check and our vet can check to make sure that this turtle is making progress. So the last time they were weighed um, was on August 18th. So we don't have a current weight for them in September, but um, we do notice that there is a positive trend in um, increasing weight for this turtle. So when they first arrived, they were 182 pounds, but um, after 110 days from April 30th to August 18th, they have now gotten up to 216 pounds. So we can see there that this turtle is gaining weight. They are on a positive track. And then we're just gonna continue this and hope that this turtle is eventually able to get back to a healthy weight. 
Looking at the recovery of a DTS patient will be different for each turtle that you look at. A lot of the time, DTS patients do take a long time to recover. This is pretty common with turtles with this type of illness. As of September 8th, 2025, lichen has been in rehab for 129 days, but in those 129 days, they've shown a lot of improvements. So there's been improvements in buoyancy, they've been able to gain a lot of weight back, and their blood samples have improved a lot, so from 7 to 11%, which is a really good sign. Lichen still has some time left in their recovery process, um, but it is looking good for lichen. We have seen those improvements, which is a really good sign that hopefully one day this turtle will be able to be released. But not all DTS patients show that same progress, um, which is very sad, but some turtles are just too debilitated on arrival, and despite our best efforts, there's not much we can do. So this turtle here is Bramble. They came to us on August 5th, and this was another DTS patient pretty similar to lichen when they first came in, but during those first few weeks, you really can't tell if they're going to improve a lot while they're here or they're not going to be able to um, have the strength to be able to carry on. So sadly, Bramble did pass away on August 18th after being with us for 13 days, but this just shows how harmful DTS can be for these turtles. You know, patients like lichen have been improving, but it does take a very long time and a lot of effort to get these guys better. So DTS really does um, a lot of harm for these turtles, so it does, you know, sometimes end with these turtles passing away. But we do have a lot of turtles like lichen that are able to improve as well. So we have both ends of the spectrum here with these kinds of patients. So throughout this video, we've discussed cases of why our loggerheads ended up in our facility this year. But these are some ways we can all help our loggerheads to make sure that they are able to live happy and healthy lives out in the ocean. So our first one is to follow boating speed limits. A lot of the time when we get a boat strike sea turtle, it's because people are just going a little too fast and they don't see our turtles. And we know not everyone is gonna purposely try to hit these turtles, but following those boating speeds really does help protect them and make sure that we can see them while they're out in the ocean. Next one is to respect nesting turtles and hatchlings. So these guys are nesting a lot here on our island. So doing our best to respect them, um, give them a safe place to do this process is a really big way we can protect them. Next, we can properly discard a fishing line. So as I mentioned, a lot of these guys do get hooked or you know entangled in our fishing gear. So doing our best to make sure that that stuff stays out of the ocean. And then lastly, just reducing our marine debris. So these guys don't have as much to interact with when they're in the ocean. Our last really big way that we can help these loggerheads is to report any stranded or sick sea turtles you may see. It's important that we know that they're out there and that they need help so that we can get them into our facility and try to help them as best as we can. So you can call our number at 910-329-0222 and follow the prompt to get to our hotline, or you can also call the NC Stranding Hotline at 252-241-7367. So with all the sea turtles that we get here in our hospital, our end goal is to always release these guys back to the ocean. As part of our mission, we wanna release as many injured sea turtles as we possibly can. So we've been able to release two loggerheads that were admitted in 2025. Our first one is Yao Pond that you can see here on the left. Sometimes with our big loggerheads, we do have a little cart that we can take them on and we just strap them in just to make sure they don't try to get off while we're getting them to the ocean. So Yao Pond again came January 8th and then was released on May 12th. But here to the right, you can see Huckleberry being released back to the ocean. This was back on May 21st. And you can see on our loggerheads, we put them in the sand and let them walk themselves back to the ocean. So this right here is such an important part in what we do here. It's always so great to see these guys being released back to the ocean. It means that we're fulfilling a part of our mission and it's just a big day to not only celebrate the turtles, but celebrate the work we're able to do to give back to these guys in any way that we can. So there's Huckleberry making their way back to the ocean where they belong. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this week's video. Um, a big part of what we do here is education and just letting the world know the threats these guys face. Um, this helps with their conservation and just informing people on what these guys have going on. So thank you again for watching. We really appreciate it. Um, make sure to stay tuned to our Facebook on Tuesday. We'll be doing another live stream where we get to meet our patients and just learn a little bit more about them and um, what we do here for them in our facility. But again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it.